Hello, and welcome Hello. to Leader Spotlight. I'm Tracy Clark. I'm the Executive Director for the Louisa County Chamber of Commerce. And today I'm so excited to get to know our new Fire Chief, Robert Dubay. I'm excited to have him here. Thank you for taking some time to share a little bit about you and about what's happening in Louisa County Fire and EMS. Robert, um, why don't we start with just a real easy one. Tell us a little bit about um, kind of your path or involvement with being in Louisa. I understand you just recently kind of moved back into the area. Yeah, we, um, I came here in 2008 for the, for the first time um, when Louisa was looking for a fire chief to, to build a new department or, or, or get a new direction with the, um, the way the system was going. So we moved here in 2008. Um, and then in 14, I had the opportunity to go home, basically to my hometown to be a, a chief up there and came back here in 19 and um, in 2020, this, this job came open again and obviously it's right down the street from where we live and, and I knew the, the system and the people. So it was a pretty easy choice to, to step back into this role and I'm really happy I did. Oh, that's wonderful. I'm wondering if, um, okay, a, a printer just started going off in this office. Can you hear it? Yeah, uh, no, not really, no. <laughs> okay, good. We'll keep going. That's what it is about doing interviews live like this. You just don't know what's mm -hmm. happening in the background. So, so tell us a little bit, um, you know, your path. I like to kind of get to know the history of how did you wind up being, um, you know, fire chief and being a fireman. Are you one of those that started as a young boy, like I want to be a fireman and made your dream come true? Or is there a different story to your path? No, that that's pretty much it. My uh, my dad was in the fire, my dad and my grandfather were both in the fire service. Um, and so my dad was probably my biggest role model, obviously. He, he, um, he was one of the first firefighters in Fairfax County back in the uh, late 50s, I guess. And he moved up through the ranks. He, be, he ultimately became the fire chief in Loudoun County. Um, so, you know, I, you know, from a very young age, I, I just always remember trying to get him to let me go with him on fire calls or, or go to the station and hang around. And my grandfather, who was a member in one of the stations in Fairfax, when we'd visit them, we, dad and I, and we'd always end up at the firehouse. So I, I honestly, I didn't even know there was another job. So this was the only thing I wanted, <laughs> ever wanted to do. And I'm glad I did. And it's been a great, it's been a great career. Well, that is great. I mean, you, I just think that's wonderful that you found out at such a young age. And um, I imagine that that is that a pretty typical story for a lot of people that are in the fire department or in EMS, that it's a family tradition or. It's, it's, there is a lot of that. Yeah. And then there's other, um, the other influences is when I went to high school in Loudoun, actually, you know, most of the community were volunteers at the fire station or the rescue station. And it was a lot of community pride there. And, it was one of the ways to give back was to be a volunteer. So it wasn't just a family thing, although that's that's a big part of it. A lot of times there's also the community pride and there's a lot of that in Louisa still today that there's a lot of people that want to volunteer and give back and, and be part of the volunteer fire or rescue. So it, it's kind of both of those. Yeah, it, it, it's such an interesting, you know, my, my uh, experience with fire and EMS you know, I've, I've seen the TV shows, mm -hmm. Fire and EMS, and uh, I, I do, my mother and my sister did volunteer for with our volunteer rescue squad, and there's such dedication and commitment, whether it's a volunteer or even in a paid uh, role, and in Louisa, we have both types of um, Fire and EMS, right? Volunteer and paid. Yeah. We do. We we have both. And um, so back in the late 90s, before I got here, the, the volunteer rescue squads went to the board and, and said they couldn't really handle the call volume during the day is where it started, the weekdays when volunteers obviously had to work. And as the economy changed, um, people's roles changed. They, they just couldn't give back either the time just to run the calls was a big part. And But the other part is the training and the education requirements is vastly increase over over the course of my career it's wholly different from when I first started with just the length of time it takes to be a, an EMT to ride the ambulance for example it is a lot of time commitment just to get the training and then there's the the calls after that so that's where the county stepped in and started hiring um, what started out as career EMS providers and that graduated 
to the mid 2000s when the, the, the fire companies went to the board and basically had the same story at the, the board at the time decided, well, if we're going to get into this business, we need someone to be in charge of it. And they advertised for a you know career fire chief. And I was lucky enough to be selected as that that person when I first came here in 2008. And it's been great. That's great. Let me ask you a couple of questions about, um, you know, because obviously being a fire chief is a substantial role and responsibility. What types of, um, I guess, um, defining moments in your career that kind of transitioned you into, I want to be a leader in the fire department. Was there anything significant that happened or any particular training or anything like that, that maybe you went through that just really impacted you that you wanted to move up? Um, I, I can't really say it was one particular thing. Um, Fairfax County gave me a lot of opportunity just because the, it was such a big place and a busy place and a lot of different areas to get involved in, not just riding the, the fire truck or the ambulance. You, you could do a whole lot of different things. So as I moved up in the ranks there, I, I got involved in a lot of different aspects of the department. And uh, one of the biggest one was being part of the International Urban Search and Rescue Team, where we got sent around the world for earthquakes and natural disasters and man-made disasters, uh, those kinds of things. So as I moved up in the ranks there, I, I really felt like I could contribute as a leader or, or in that organization and then ultimately in organizations like this that uh, I had some ideas of things that I wanted to do and I thought the way things could go. And, and I'm sure all of us, whatever you, whatever job you're in, you have the, the thoughts or back when you were not in charge and you worked for a boss that wasn't so great. And you said, well, you know what, if I ever get to be the boss, I'll never do that. Um, <laughs> yeah, you yeah. learn a lot of those lessons and you, and you try to do, try to do the right thing and, and get your people to, to follow. So, yeah. How would you, how would you describe your um, leadership style and, and what, you know, how is your structure here in Louisa County? How many well, do you actually manage? The, the structure right now is, is, is um, there's two deputy chiefs under me and, and they, they split a lot of different roles and responsibilities. And in fact, it's gotten to be so much just because of the, the staff has grown, the call volume has grown and everything that goes with that, the logistical part of it, the training part of it. So we're actually adding a couple of more staff members to get to delegate some of those things down because once you re reach a saturation point, you, you can't. You can't do everything and so nothing gets done well and, that, and that's certainly not a way to go but my leadership style is to, is to find the right person for those particular jobs and functions you know give them some direction where where i want the department to go where the board tells me they want the department to go and um get out of the way and let them do their job if you pick the right people you, you really don't have to that's such a great if you don't tip. pick the right people you know you'll find out pretty quick but <laughs> yeah. I don't, um you know, I'm not going to get involved in all the minutiae, I guess, so to speak, of because if I did, then I'm not sure why I have them. But right, um, it's been pretty successful. The places I've been chief, you know, here in in the city of Alexandria, and then back here again, just to find the right people, put them in the right spot, give them the tools to be successful, and get the heck out of the way because they will definitely do the job if you let them. Yeah, I think that's such a, my follow-up question was going to be, what advice would you give to, you know, business owners or other leaders on being the most effective leader that you could be? But do you have anything else to add to kind of what your point you just made about delegating and really empowering your people? Well, yeah, I think the, the, the part of that that may not be done as well in, in some places is to give them the tools to make them successful and, that, you know, get them to training and, and look out for opportunities to make them better. And if you see something, you know, just sometimes not so gently nudge them, you're going to go to this or you're going to be part of this. And even if they don't really see the value in it to start with, they'll come back or they'll, once they get into it, they'll come back with, the, you know, the value is obviously there because they're going to do a better job. But as the boss, you have to look out for those. You can't just expect them to pick their own opportunities. You have to, you have to look for them and put yeah. them in the direction you want them. And it, part of that leads right into succession planning because if, if you don't have people ready to step up, I mean, these days especially, you, you really need to have someone ready to step in. That is so true. And then that's definitely, I mean, I think that's true across the board, even with you know, our organizations, nonprofit organizations, any kind of volunteer 
uh, organization. Uh, secession planning is so oh, yeah. important, uh, but even with you know paid type of roles and positions, you know, grooming people and leading them on that that path, right? I mean, you obviously had some great influence. Your family influenced you, and encouraging you, and and pointing you in the right direction. I think that's important as a boss. That's that's such a great um, great tip. Let's switch a little bit to talk about kind of what's going on in Louisa County. I know that there's a lot happening with you know, EMS and fire. I know that. Um, there's a fundraising and activity going on with the Lake Anna Rescue and EMS and right. um, Board of Supervisors discussions. Can you share a little bit of information about kind of, some of the things that you have in the works and, and, and you know, happening that can impact our community? Yeah, so and, um, maybe a little background before we get to that, but th there's a group, all of the volunteer organizations, the, the Rescue and the Fire, they have well until COVID hit. It was a regular monthly meeting where all of the leaders of those organizations and, and myself and two members of the board, we, we get together every month. We lay out some strategic planning things and, and some some things to try to get the system to work better together. And that's that's been going on for years. And, and it's really a good process that all of those leaders get involved. So there's not 11 independent agencies running around doing 11 different things that the others don't know about. Um, so that, that's, that's a real help to me, especially. Um, we are definitely moving and growing. Um, unfortunately, <clears throat> on the career side, there's been, I say unfortunately, because the more volunteers you can get, the better it is financially. Um, and, and then you can get a lot, lot more community involvement. And there are some volunteer organizations that are doing really well that, that, that have really added uh, a substantial number of volunteers to the system. Unfortunately, the call volume doesn't allow them to run enough calls. So we have to we have to add on our side as well. And then there's some organizations that are struggling. We're trying to help them through whether it's uh, fundraising or whether it's uh, membership drives, those kinds of things, which is really challenging in COVID times because yeah, you can get a half a dozen new members, but getting them through the training is gonna be even more difficult these days. Yeah. It, it, no, it just it just lengthens the time. Um, you you spoke briefly of the the Lake Anna, so there there was a basically an independent group of citizens that came together in the uh, Newbridge area that started a fundraiser and got board support to build a station out um, somewhere in the area of the food line there at Kentucky Springs Road in 208, and that that got some real good momentum. They did a tremendous job with fundraising. And so the board committed that if they raised a certain amount, the board would procure or, or appropriate a certain amount to build a station out there. And that's looks like it's coming to pass. Um, they, they put that money in the budget for this year and we're, we're starting the planning project of what that station will look like and then narrowing down specifically where it's gonna be. And hopefully there's uh, gonna be a lot of volunteer or people that wanna volunteer their time, whether it's on the EMS side of the fire, you don't have to do both. Uh, if you work for us as a career provider, you do both. But as a volunteer, you can do one or the other. You don't have to do both. So we, we can use people that do any of those roles. And um, hopefully there'll be enough volunteers to run out of that station. We've got a commitment from another volunteer organization in the county that, to, to supply some vehicles and equipment and ambulance and things like that. So we just need people to run it. And we'll see what happens. You know, it, it'll yeah. be... It'll be at least a year probably before that station gets up out of the ground and, and is ready to go, but we'll see. It's exciting. Um, yeah, that, exciting. that is very exciting. Um, I, I remember being at a meeting where there was also some discussion about some other improvements and things like that to other stations. Any updates or things that you can share um, regarding that? Well, yeah. The, one of the things that came out of those monthly meetings I was talking about was a 20 year capital plan. And, and this was something that was in progress when I got back here in, in September of last year that the volunteer organizations, their, their facilities, every single one of them was really not designed for 24, 24 seven staff. And, and a lot of them are older and they're starting to be, they're outgrowing them. So that, that leadership came together with the county leadership and they developed a 20-year uh, capital plan. So that in the 20-year period, a substantial investment in, in money into the facilities and the, the equipment, the rolling stock, which are 
is horrendously expensive. If, if, you've, if you've ever looked into how much a fire truck and an ambulance costs, you'd probably, you'd be completely shocked. Um, so to be able to afford those things and to be able to get the facilities where they need to be, they, they really came up with a good plan. And um, there's a couple of facilities that are one in particular that's probably gonna be completely relocated with a brand new station and that's the one in Zion. So we're looking to move that from its point extra road address out somewhere towards more of the center part of the Zion um, activity, so to speak. And right. we have a, a couple of locations we think we can use and then the, the board is committed to funding it um, three years from now, I think it is. So oh, wow. that's, that's gonna be a nice addition. Um, hopefully we'll get some more volunteers when we get a, you know, a bigger, nicer facility and we'll see how it goes. That sounds great. Tell me a little bit, um, you've mentioned volunteer and the need for volunteers a couple of times, or even paid staff for that matter. How would someone get involved as a volunteer? What's the clear path uh, for them to find out more about getting involved? Yeah, so th there's a couple ways they can do it. The, the easiest way is to go to our website, and, and I can give you that web address if you want to put it out. But to go to our website, there's a volunteer application so we, at the county level, we process the initial application. So we do a background check and, and you fill out your application and then you, all that goes through fine, which it usually does, then that's forwarded to the local volunteer organization to bring them on. Um, so if you, if you lived in um, Louisa, for example, and you wanted to volunteer at the station one downtown at the fire station or the rescue station, you know, we, we process the application give it directly to that rescue or fire chief and they would bring them on board and get you signed up for training. Um, all the training is, is free. You just have to show up. Um, so all, all of that's provided, all the equipment's provided, uniforms are provided. You just have to, all we need from you is time and commitment and, and we'll make it happen. So that's the easiest way to do it. You can go to the local stations and, and get the same application and they'll get it to us. Um, but it's easier just to get it from the website and you can email it directly to us and we can start the process. On the career side, it's a, a little different. It's just like uh, any other job you apply, you go through an interview process. We have on the career side, we have a physical agility test you have to pass um, because we do, we and we provide the training once you get hired, but we do require that you do fire and EMS. So it's a pretty lengthy process to get on board, get trained and, and get out on the street yeah, I would imagine. Yeah, those applications for the career because we're 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 hiring now. So if you're interested, that that's on the county the general county website. Just any any other normal job application, that's where you get it. Okay, great. Yeah, I will take the um, the website address and in fact any of those job postings or even volunteer opportunities. If you want to shoot that over to me, I can get that added oh, yeah. to our website as well. Um, mm -hmm. Why don't you, for the benefit of people listening to this, what is the website that they would go to? Um, oh. So it's a, it's the Louisa County. Is it the regular Louisa County website? Okay. Yeah, if you go to the county website, so louisacounty.com. Yeah. And in there you find Fire and EMS, click on that. That link will take you directly to ours. And inside of ours is the link for the volunteer application. So great, 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 great. Now. com. So the career um, opportunities, I'm assuming that's for fire and uh, EMT, uh, but volunteering, are, what type of roles are there with volunteering? I mean, do you have to be interested in fighting fires or, or driving an ambulance or are there other volunteer opportunities? The, the, some of the companies have, I think all of them have a, a, an amount of what they call administrative volunteers. So if you have a background in finance and budgeting or CPA kind of work, uh, I'm sure some of them, if not all of them, could, could use somebody to do that. Um, there's other things when, when COVID's not around and they do fundraising activities, you know, whether it's a any kind of food, like Louisa Company One used to do the big chicken dinner drive where they would, you know, you would donate a, an amount of money and you get a chicken dinner out of it. They, uh, they pay right. for the fire trucks that way back in the day. And of course, a couple of companies, Louisa and Mineral still, they didn't do it this past year, but they still do the, the carnivals and the, and the fairs so that that's a fundraising activity. People to work for those, you know, work in the booths or, or help with those kinds of things. So 
there are some opportunities, um, but the biggest thing we look for is people to ride the trucks and go on the calls. Yeah, well, that's so important. I'm, and especially you've mentioned a couple times that the calls are increasing. Um, is that directly related to the pandemic and what's going on with that? Or is there something else happening that we should be aware of? No, it's, um, it's funny when the pandemic first started and everything kind of shut down in the spring of uh, last year, our calls dropped off. I'll, and I talked to some of my colleagues in, in this business and they said the same thing. The first three or four months, the calls just basically dropped off the cliff and it, it was pretty crazy. But then they gradually started picking back up and here lately we're running way more than we even did before that. Um, and we still, we run a lot of uh, COVID patients on the EMS side. Wow. Well, we certainly, I, I really appreciate your time being with me today and sharing a little bit about you and what's going on here in Louisa. And um, is there anything that maybe you would like to share that I haven't asked you yet? Um, no, I, I always like to close with a, uh, a couple of PSAs if I could. So the first one is learn CPR and you don't have to do the mouth to mouth anymore. The, the Heart Association has the, the course is hands only CPR. We can offer that. Several of the volunteer organizations offer that. And, and it's really simple. It's easy to do. And that's a great way to help us. Uh, and the second thing is check your smoke detectors. Go home tonight and push that button. Um, if you haven't done it for a while, you might be surprised it might not even work. And if you wow. need a smoke detector, if you need help putting one up, if you need anything to do with that, all you have to do is call our non-emergency line and we'll have someone come out. And that's on our website also. Just we will, ha I'll have somebody come out and help you. So those two things, if you could do those things, you could, you could help save us, save a life too. That is great. You know, I would like to get with you. Perhaps we can do a um, something related to the businesses and making sure that our business folks have at least someone that knows how to do, do CPR. Absolutely. Yeah. We yeah especially our restaurants and stuff. So we can talk a little bit offline about that. I'd love to help okay. something um, to that extent. So again, thank you so much for being with us. Thank you everybody for, for being here. And um, if you do have any follow-up questions, you can reach me at louisachamber.org. And I just want to say thanks again. I hope everybody has a great day and I hope you do too. I'm excited to see what you do moving forward in Louisa County. Um, thanks so much. Great. Thank you. Bye-bye now.